Good morning YouTube, this is Stevie the Scotsman. Um, I'm in the process of getting my garage door up and running and I thought I would just like make a video on the operation of this garage door and if you would like to try and go ahead and fix it things you should take into consideration. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there um, on how to balance it, how to, to wind it and all that type of thing so I'm really here to join the dots. There's a lot of people who are like don't touch this thing in the spring, it's going to kill you and all that. So since we're in a country where you know you have to worry about people being dumb and you know doing stupid things I'll have a disclaimer if your family trees go straight up in the air you may not want to consider doing this alright there's my disclaimer the rest, the rest of you guys pretty much uh, common sense in this country and as well as other countries a lot of times you pay for what you don't know and a lot of people will put the fear of God into you you know don't touch this garage door you're going to die you might have people coming out you need a new garage door or, or, or they'll shaft you on the price um, I don't like being at the mercy of others guys so I'm going to make an attempt here to go and fix it um, I'm an ex-RAF ex um, aircraft engineer, you know, I understand systems, this is just a system as an input, a process and an output. So let me just try and um, uh, give you a heads up here on, on these garage doors and so that you might, maybe hopefully I can inspire you with a little bit of confidence to go in there and actually give it a go yourself, you know. So um, here we go. So I'm going to go through the theory but in my case I'm replacing these guides and I'm replacing the cable. The cable is still to be attached. These are new guides and I'm going to replace and, and use two, uh, two new cables. And this, what I actually happened was the actual sp uh, cable snapped. Now you can get the parts from like DIY garage door parts I believe. I think I paid 20 bucks total for the two cables and the guides. So the first thing before you get to this stage is obviously these are going to be tensioned on here on this spring. So you can look at videos here um, on getting these released and um, setting it up so that you can get the counterbalance. So you're probably thinking, counterbalance Stevie, what are you talking about? Let me explain, try and explain in a nutshell how these things work. Okay, so I know this is like I am three drawing guys, but hey I really want to see if I can be clear and get the point across here. So we have the ceiling, we have a shaft, spring, two guides, the garage door and these are pretty much clips where the cables go on at the base of the garage door and we have the floor. So when this is all operational what we will have, we'll have a net force of zero at the base of that garage door so that you can just use your little force just to lift it up and this is kind of like basic physics so I'm, I'm not a physicist, um, I'm not even a gynecologist but I'll take a good look at it. So here's um, some vectors here that I'm just going to try and um, use to show you what's going on. So here's the sky once again. Yeah, I know, here we are. We have the, the force of the door coming down towards the ground. Now what we need to create that net force of zero is a spring force. And then what we're going to do is, really when we lift this garage door, we're going to have two upward forces and one going down. With the, with the resultant force being able to just lift this garage door with, with your hand. So once again, weight of, the, weight of the door, the spring force, and this is the force that we're going to use to lift it up. So the whole crux of this system is getting this, this garage door so that this is balanced. Okay? So what we'll do is we will wind this spring by turning that shaft, typically seven or eight turns, go on YouTube, you can figure it out. Not a problem. I don't want to like repeat myself. I just want to give you the confidence and the theory to go ahead and tackle this. So let me just take you up to the garage door here. All right. So here you can see when this is going at the moment. This spins freely. So what I'm going to do here is we are going to turn the shaft in this direction here, in this case clockwise to tension that spring and you'll see basically when you do this there will be winding bars and the winding bars will now rest against the top of the garage the, the top of the garage door I'm tempted to show you but if you look at a video you can see that <coughs> this is the winding bar here but let me just show you here so when this 
gets wound in and you start turning it, you obviously need two winding bars here. I just used, um, I think it was like half inch um, round bar. You can pick it up from a, I got this from a metal supplier, but you can, like for four or five bucks, you can get something from Home Depot, Manaz, wherever in the States, B&Q, back in the UK. So when we start winding in this, this is actually going to be resting against here. So you probably typically do seven or eight turns. You can always put tip X or some white paint to get the number of turns. Once again, I'm just ballparking this. Go on YouTube, figure out how to do it. So the stage I'm at is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this upward, upward spring force by turning this count. Actually, I'm going to create it count clockwise because if I turn this clockwise then that bar is going to be against that top of that garage door. Alright, so I turn this eight times at that point that's secured there. I can use the, the weight of the rod against that garage door keep it tight. At that point what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the guides and the cable and at that point the, the weight of this door and the force of this spring creates typically and ideally a net force of zero, right? So then what you what you then do is by turning this garage door by that cable is just a tension, by pushing that garage door up, this is going to turn and the garage door will actually move. And obviously you can you can have a motor if you need to, or you can you can do it manually. So I realize this is not conclusive. But as I said, I met a lot of people, you don't want to do that. I think, like everything, you need to understand how it works. I, I do a lot of work on vehicles, motorcycles, and I explain to people um, in, in, in my job, you need to understand how this works to fix it. Don't just throw parts at it. Don't just guess. Don't just shut your eyes and hope that something happens. Know what you're doing and while you're doing it. So, like I said, guys, if this has helped one person, it's been worth it. You know what, my suspicion is I'll probably have to uh, comment, disable the, the comments because there's all these Muppets who are going to comment, this is dangerous, you shouldn't be doing this to people. You know what, walking across the street is dangerous. Um, um, and I notice that the more and more on YouTube you have all these naysayers and a lot of times these people don't have any experience um, of, of what you're actually trying to portray. So hey. I realise there's guys out there who do this for a living and are like, really Stevie? This is this is what you're showing the public? I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm showing the public. One final trick that I might what I want to show you is that's quite handy. What I'll do is, you know, if this thing drops to its knees and you need to secure this thing, here's what I do. I use some tie downs, you know, just above the garage door there. And you can see I'll put it in one of the slats here, and then I'm able to get this thing level before I actually do the job. So, I was a little bit um, apprehensive about doing this video, but you know what? If it helps a couple of people, great. All right, guys, I'm Steve Scotsman signing off. Hope this has been useful. All the best, cheers.